The purpose of the determination of the pH testing is to calculate the change in the pH values due to the natural structures of the textile products and the chemical processes applied to them during the production processes. Because of this feature, we will be informed about the chemical processes which are applied to the fabric in a pH test. This test is applicable to all kinds of textile products. During the progress of our test, we use a mechanical shaker. Besides the this, we use some potassium chloride solution. The potassium chloride solution should be at 0.1 molarity. We use a precision balance, a pH meter and buffer solutions for the calibration of the pH meter. Various glass materials for the preparation of our solutions are used. The samples are shaken and of course we use distilled water in the preparation of the solutions. During the sample preparation process of the pH test, we first lay our fabric on a flat surface. Then we cut pieces from different parts of the fabric. These parts must be three units and we must make sure that the parts are not too small, for example, less than two grams. For the purpose of representing all the samples, we make sure that they contain different warp and weft yarns. In addition, it is very important that our samples are conditioned in standard atmospheric conditions before being subjected to the test. Now, I take the first of three pieces that we have cut off and I cut them again into small pieces which must be not bigger than 0.5 centimeters. We mustn't forget to wear gloves so that the samples are not affected by any sweat. The samples cut in this way, which are considered as 2 grams, are put on the conical flask scale for exact weighing. I get the fabric with the help of the spatula. I get the conical flask after I weigh these samples in the range of 2 grams with plus minus 0.5. Then I apply the same process to the other two pieces and put them into the conical flask and so I have prepared three pieces of the test sample. I adjust the calibration of the pH meter to measure the pH of the potassium chloride solution that we have prepared. Therefore, we wash the tip of the electrode with distilled water first. Then, we slowly dry it with the edge of a napkin and we especially make sure that everywhere is dry. We use pH 7 and pH 4 buffers for the calibration process. We start the measurement with the calibration step in pH meter. First, we find the asymmetry value in pH meter. The measurement is completed when the pH is fixed. We compare the value we see with the table value and decide that there is no problem with the calibration of the pH meter if the value is between the value range. I stop it when it is fixed.
then I get the pH 4. The priority should always be given to the pH 7 in the calibration process, for this process provides neutralization of the pH meter. If our work range is with alkaline samples, then we use pH 7 and pH 10. After drying it well, this time I dip it into the pH 4. Again, I am waiting to read the asymmetry value. Shortly after the device is fixed to the value of the asymmetry, an irregularity value appears on the screen. I check whether the value is between the desired range or not. After the completion of this process, I measure the pH of the buffer. If the value of the pH 4 fits with the temperature on it, then I understand that the pH is correct. After observing this on the screen of the pH meter, the calibration with the pH 4 process is completed. In the final stage of the pH 7 calibration, I go back and measure the pH of it, and the calibration of the pH is completed. The tip of the pH meter, namely the tip of the electrode, is a very sensitive piece of apparatus and should never be exposed to shocks and its tip should be cleaned properly every time. In the same way, I look at the correspondence of the pH with its observed temperature and if I observe that it is suitable, I say there is no problem. I observe the value on the screen and I complete the calibration of the pH meter. When the test is not in progress, that is, when the pH meter is off, the electrode tip of the pH meter is kept in the potassium chloride solution. Now I measure the pH of the solution. Again, I wash and dry the electrode with pure water and immediately dip it into the solution. I set the length here and wait for the fixation of the value on the screen. I save the pH value when I am sure that it is fixed. I can also see the temperature of the solution on the screen of the pH meter and I save both the temperature and the pH value. In the next step, I apply the solution that I have prepared to the samples. For this, I apply 100 milliliters to each sample. I make sure that in colorless liquids, the lower surface of the liquid is in the line. In this way, I apply the solution. The next thing to do is to place the prepared sample inside the mechanic beater and leave it exposed to the churning process for two hours. Our prepared test samples that are put into the mechanical beater which moves back and forth 60 times per minute, are shaken for two hours.
We measure the pH values of the samples which have been taken out of the device. For this, we first apply the filtering process. We put the filter paper that we cut into the cone. We filter our sample. In this process, it is very important not to touch the solution with our hands because it may affect the pH value. We wore gloves in the process of the sample preparation, but we don't have to wear gloves here because we do not touch the solution with our hands. After filtering the sample properly, I immediately wash the tip of the electrode with pure water. I dry it sensitively so that there is no wetness anywhere and dip it into the solution. At this stage, the only thing to do is to wait for the fixation of the pH. The obtained value is not taken as the test result. We use this value only to reach the stability of the pH meter. Then we filter and measure the pH values of our second and third samples in the same way. And we give the pH test result by calculating the arithmetical average of these second and third pH values.